Hello, Void. How are you doing? Divi Rizzo here, and let's round out the Frankenstein collection. Finish the Wolfman one. Let's get the Frankenstein one taken care of, shall we? I'll get back to Dracula when I get back to Dracula. That one's been a little bit slower since my partner also wants to see some of the films on that collection. So I have to tear to a different schedule. I can't just blitz through them like I have in some of the other ones. But anyway, final one on here. House of Frankenstein, 1944. And this one has a lot of the old favorites returning. Uh, we do have, uh, is it, uh, Boris Karloff is back. However, he is not actually playing the Frankenstein monster this time. He is playing the scientist, uh, the would-be Dr. Frankenstein in this, Dr. Neiman. We have a new uh, hunchback named Daniel. Uh, this time the Frankenstein monster is played by Glenn Strange. And we also have John Carradine showing up as Count Dracula. And Lon Chaney Jr. reprising his role once more as Lawrence Talbot. So you got Frankenstein, you got at, uh, Dracula, and you got the Wolfman. Sounds like it could be a fun movie. 50-50. Now... This one does take place after the events of uh, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Referencing that the Wolfman and the Frankenstein monster were destroyed, uh, then were supposedly killed when the dam burst. This one follows uh, Dr. Neiman and his uh, hunchbacked assistant as he breaks out of an asylum because he's a mad doctor wanting to carry on Frankenstein's legacy. Apparently his uncle worked with Dr. Frankenstein in their college days or something, and he wants to uh, get at those materials to essentially become the new great doctor. He's promised his hunchback that he'd uh, put him in a better body, make him beautiful again, or clear it. And so this is about him trying to get to the Frankenstein castle, to get the Frankenstein notes, to become the new doctor. Along the way, he essentially bumped, uh, he wants to get some revenge on people who wronged him, so he infiltrates a traveling freak show that supposedly has the remains of Count Dracula. So, just the skeleton with a stake jammed in it, you remove the stake, Dracula comes back. So, that's pretty much what he does. He commandeers the freak show, takes it to a village that, uh, got him, that wronged him, pulls the stake out, and lets Dracula do his thing. Get back to that in a minute. Put a, put a note there. Then uh, they pick up a traveling Romani girl. I don't want to get into offensive terms or slurs, but uh, they use the old timey phrase for it. But uh, that she is being kicked out of her troop, so uh, she joins uh, Dr. Neiman, and Daniel develops an infatuation on her. They head up to the Frankenstein castle and the Frankenstein monster, and the Wolfman, and uh, go about thawing them out. The Frankenstein monster see, is pretty much unconscious even after thawed, and Lawrence Talbot is once more back from the dead and doing his whole, please help me die, and uh, wants uh, some assistance there. Neiman has promised him to help him with his curse. Now... The Romani girl, whose name is escaping me, I watched this a little while ago, is, uh, before was kind of flirting with Daniel, but now once she meets Talbot, well, apparently the guy's a heartthrob, because every movie he's in, he's getting a, a new lady love. Uh, Daniel wants, uh, essentially to make the doctor put his brain in Talbot's body, wants to put the wolf, then the wolf man... He wants to put the Frankenstein brain in the Wolfman body. It's confusing for the body swapperoo, but uh, eventually the Frankenstein monster gets charged up, and they say that the one well, only ways to kill the uh, Wolfman is for someone who loves him and knows what they're doing to shoot him with a silver bullet. So she goes about that. Frankenstein a monster carries off the new the would be Dr. Frankenstein and it's and everybody has fun. Okay. So it's not a bad film. 
It's got a lot going on here. And I wasn't invested in some of the characters. My problem is Dracula. John Carradine does a fine Dracula. There's no problem there. But he is you can cut him entirely out of the film and lose nothing. His entire role is get up, okay, I'll then be held at stake point. Is like, okay, I'll do this one thing for you if, if you'll serve me after. Goes, kills one person at uh, his request, gets chased by a carriage, and then gets hit by the sunlight. He's in the movie like 10 minutes tops. He's completely extraneous to the main plot. They just happen upon Dracula's skeleton, and then Dracula happens to get up and then happens to die, with no bearing on the main plot. They were just putting him in just for main power. The love triangle between uh, Lawrence Talbot, Daniel, and the, the young Romani girl. I really want to remember her name, but it's just not coming. It's fine. Like, uh, that's does add some emotional stakes, and Dolores Talbot is, again, a very sympathetic character. Lon Chaney Jr. is acting his heart out again, and I love him for it. The Romani girl is very charming, and you do honestly uh, feel for her in getting involved in with the wolf man. And Daniel is a nice guy, so you can be sympathetic to him, despite uh, him later wanting to take over Talbot's body. You understand his frustration. I mean, Doctor's a dick, but hey. So, I'd say it's pretty good overall. It's one of the better of the sequels. I liked it better than uh, Ghost or... than Ghost of Frankenstein or Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman. So, I'd, I'd give this one a good six MacGuffins. It's good. just has some extra bits that really weren't necessary to it. So, House of Frankenstein, fine farewell to it all. <coughs> mm. Excuse me. But, uh, yeah. I do recommend, uh, in general, the, all the Frankenstein movies are worth seeing at least once. Some of them are a little odd. But, overall, it's a good series. This one's a fine send-off. Alright. Have a good day, everybody.